and after also you will need removal of residual heat and to promote healing in order to regenerate a new skin replacing the lost layers. So, to manage these procedures for best results, pharmaceutical science presents the solutions. This is and now I'm going to make a solution. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now for the time for the solution. Okay. Three procedures. And, and, and procedures. fast minutes for you, Mori. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, three procedures, local anesthetics is the most for sure local anesthesia. Okay. Lidocaine is the most famous local anesthetic. Sprays, creams, and uh, so on. And in the same time, it has a pharmaceutical effect. Wait, wait. <laughs> the efficacy profile of lidocaine is a local anesthetic is characteristic by a rapid onset of action and immediate duration of the effects. Also, it is the most common use, but it has some problems. So, here's a pharmaceutical solution come. A new combination for higher efficacy and longer duration of action. This new combination, Brilla cream, lidocaine 2.5% and the Brillocaine 2.5%. You take the mixture. This, yes, it's topical cream. Accumulation of lidocaine and the Brillocaine in the vicinity of dermal pain receptors and nerve ending lidocaine and the Brillocaine are a mild type local anesthetic agents. Both lidocaine and the Brillocaine stabilize neuronal membrane by inhibiting the ionic fluxes required for the initiation and conduction of impulses be affecting local anesthetic action. So it's working by this mechanism. The difference that it's a combination of two acting. Why? Because there is different in the pharmaceutical structure of both of them. The difference in the pharmaceutical structure for prelocate give him the ability to bend more to the side of action. So giving longer duration of action also with its characteristic against all other local anesthetics, but it has a vasoconstrictor effect, not a vasodilatation effect, and this makes the difference. Both of them can give a great results in, uh, in local anesthesia, and you can work now without any problem. Brella provides dermal analgesia, the depth of which depends upon the application time and applied dose. Systemic absorption of lidocaine and the prelocaine from umbrella is dependent upon the applied dose application time, the thickness of the skin, which are, uh, varies between different areas of the body. I don't want to go further more in this point. I can tell you something. Just uh, build your experience with using this mixture because it has different way of application. Because we are uh, uh, talking about three parameters. Apply dose, how much you are going to apply. Apply time, how duration you are going to leave the cream to do its action. The thickness of the skin, it's a skin or in, in, in soles, in face, in uh, mucous membrane. This will depend and will make difference in the efficacy of Brilla cream. Absorption safety, use Brella safety because when 60 gram of Brella cream was applied over uh, uh, 400 centimeters square for 20 hours, peak blood levels of little pain are approximately 1 over 20, the systemic toxic level. Likewise, the maximum of three cocaine, 1 over 56, and this why it's give longer duration of action because it's lower absorbed in blood. Okay? So you can, the dosage administration, minor dermal procedure. For minor procedure, 2.5 gram, uh, grams of Brilla cream, half of the two, five uh, gram, over 20 to 25 centimeter square. You will gain your experience using Brilla with several usage, because this will make difference between case to others. Major dermal procedures. For more painful dermatological procedure involving larger skin area, apply two grams of Brella cream per 10 centimeters square of skin and allow to remain in contact with the skin for at least 30 minutes. The golden rule is about how much I will put, for how long I will leave, this for which area I'm working. All right? Uh, other usage we will not discuss. Post procedures. The post procedures, we have an, an excellent solution for this. It's about the art of skin regeneration 
or the physiological moist environment provided by Abumep. Abumep helps to induce the indigenous regeneration power of the body through providing physiological moist environment. This is a very interesting issue. We can talk, uh, inshallah, next meeting in details about what is the physiological moist environment and what it's, its great role in healing and excellent scar formation and uh, everything we can It's composed of beeswax system oil as a frame structure, including 17 amino acid, 15 fatty acid, 4 polysaccharides. It has a very interesting uh, physical character. It's about low melting point. It's immediately upon exposure to body temperature, changing from se uh, semi-solid to liquid form. So by this melting, removes the residual heat, preventing indirect physical entry, and that's what, what you need after procedures, especially like laser resurfacing. Okay? Rapid wound closure with the maintenance of the anatomic structure and function is a very important point related to the usage of Abumep. Uh, we will focus here that it destroys the living environment of bacteria which stops the growth of bacteria, so it will keep the environment clean after the procedure. Okay? And uh, effective protection against the scar, this will not be found uh, in your procedures uh, uh, almost. We can jump. At last, analgesic effect, micro-isolation of the exposed and damaged nerve ending of the skin, removes the spasm of the rectal muscles and here uh, and ace pain. beta cytosterol has anti-inflammatory effect. Perperin is reported to have analgesic effect besides its antifungal effect. Uh, this is first why uh, we can use Abumab. Helps to regenerate the skin after the removal of upper layer. Helps to absorb the residual heat. Helps to protect the skin from bacterial infection relieving the pain after procedure, protect the scars formation. Uh, thank you very much. I know that you have so many questions related to the two presentations, but the, because the time... Uh, we, we, can, we can give 10 minutes for discussion after okay. two lectures. After we finish, two lectures? Yes, yeah, we okay. finish this session and then we give chance to minute, 10 minutes for questions, one question for each speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. Rahman. Fantastic. And we go to the next speaker, Dr. Adel Nakar. Are you ready? 15 minutes, please. Sorry, I feel sleepy because I have taken a muscle relaxant. I just would like to introduce myself to you, all of you. Uh, I have graduated my MBBS from uh, Pakistan in 1997. I have finished my four years residency on uh, Jordan. Then I have uh, I went for uh, two years complete, two years a program in dermatopathology. I love this uh, sub specialty so much because uh, once you feel you have an interest to have a good diagnosis for the patient, of course, you have a proper way to diagnose the patient. After I finished my two years program in, on dermatopathology, I went to Khartoum to have an MD for three years program. And the uh, professor's uh, committee there, they will have a, a reason that uh, should be in uh, uh, something related to dermatopathology, uh, clinical, I mean, clinical pathological correlation in some diseases in dermatology. But finally, when I came to Yemen, I became a shock. Nobody give a care to dermatopathologists, especially who they are, I mean, a good dermatologist, and especially who they have a courses to, to go through the uh, Arabian, job, uh, uh, Arabian court for dermatology specialty. And like, for example, next, please. So still we have a need to greet up the dermatologist consultations in Yemen. I have gotten a promise from the government in this 2013 for two seats in dermatopathologists abroad, but for those who they are already qualified as a dermatologist. And I hope we, we have somebody who have an interest to go outside to have the course training. So if we will go through Hawaii, we are thinking for the dermatopathologist. Most of the patients, they come to me. They come to me from a general surgeon. They are no dermatologist at all. 
so they sent for me like a, some fragments on a, some container without any forms, without any confirmations, whatever the legends or type of the legends or whatever. I mean, uh, a, a biodata for the for the patient in the which are compulsory needed for the dermatology or dermatopathologist to have a, a proper way to diagnose the, the case. And the second point which I became really shocked I am coming to talk to this. And the second point I came to this, a very good student who was to attend my lecture on dermatopathology, she was only attending to pass the exam. But once a patient comes to me, she has a report from a general pathologist and the patient she was having done a very erythematous papules on the skin. And once we have I mean, I, I asked the slide, the same slide, the same doctor has sent her to the, to the pathology lab. The pathology lab give a conclusion, a non-specific chronic dermatitis. Okay, once I read the slide again, I thought that, that the patient, she is going with mycosis fungoides. So once we confirmed the patient with SD 30 and 34, she became a positive. Really, I get sad, I said, if my student, she's doing like this, so from whom I expect somebody to refer, I mean, a dermatopathology case to me. And in the end, we are working in a one team just to have a good standard for dermatologist doctor. Okay, I don't, I don't have to, you don't have to send the patient for me, but there should be some, some uh, what you call a unity cooperation on this field. Okay, next please. Next, please. So once I have taken a biostatic, uh, I mean, uh, studies from those general pathologist lab, about less than 2% they have a skin biopsies. Not 5% is mistaken there. So again, there are sometimes maybe the money in charge for the money, it is standing uh, opposite just to have a, a biopsy for the patient, either the cost also. But in the end, if you have a proper and correct diagnosis for the patient, of course you will have to save a lot of money for the patient. Next, please. So the diagnostic error here due to lack of understanding of the dermatological clinical picture, because the general pathologist, he does not know what does it mean for pure or macule or either a patch or whatever, you will give him a description on, the, on your form. If you are writing a form, because most of them just send the patient with the, as I told you, with the fragment of the skin. Okay, next please. So the purpose here of talk is to stress the importance of clinical pathological correlation and assessing the clinical picture in conjunctions with the slide interpretations. So as a one case, we have here 45 years old female with persistent red patch on the left arm. She came to me. Again, next. On the pathology slide, I haven't seen, I have seen just uh, like there are some inflammatory, dense inflammatory cells. Next, please. On the dermis and some, uh, I mean, parakeratosis and some uh, the, the necrotic cells on the, on the epidermis, but there is no any other information which is the clinical picture. Next, please. Again, next. Because this are the slides that show the inflammatory dense on the on the cells and necrotic cells. Next, please. So even once I thought that there are necrotic cells are found most commonly, there are so many diseases. Of course, they have a necrotic cells. If you will, those who they are interesting to read about the pathology of the disease, like a lichen planus, like a graft versus host disease, a lichen nettitus, a lupus, and drug erections, inflamed keratosis like no actinic keratosis and like in planus like keratosis. Next please. So again I, I doubt whether this diagnosis it goes with mycosis or drug or like in planus or like no keratosis. So next please. So I thought okay I'll call the physician who has taken this slide. He may give me give me some I mean help to whatever the clinical finding. So in the end, I thought, okay, well, I may go through immunohistochemical studies. Then I called the physicians, 
and I have asked him some questions. Next, please. Those questions I have asked him again, those patch and papules or the distribution of lesions. If he could, I mean, if the, the procedure was properly done from the beginning and I have a form, whatever in the patient, I have save a time for the, for the patient. Next, please. These are the amino histochemical I was thinking to, done, to do, but they are most costly and whenever you ask the patient for further investigations, of course, especially if he's a poor, he will not go through the investigations. Again, next, please. Next, please. So the clinical clue here, when I called the physician, he said maybe it goes for those cutaneous populous squamous disease, like whatever, psoriasis, or maybe sometimes he think like a believer or bacteriosis, like not chronic. So when I go, if we will go with the clinical clues, like all of you knows, la, my causes when go this what does it have tend to be a patch and plaques and the drug eruptions also, like noid keratosis should be some solitary mass also. Next please. The like complainers here, like flat top papule or purple blue polygonal papule, sometimes related to some drugs. And the drug eruptions have a temporal relationship to drug exposure. Next please. So when we, I call him again, next please, he gave me the height that there are some solitary mass and some lesions, they are attached. I mean, he gave me either should be, he have a solitary mass and he has some patches also. So I start thinking of my causes fungoides and our final diagnosis was on, on clinical approach was uh, uh, my causes fungoides or benign uh, as called the inflammatory like noid keratosis. When I go again through the immunohistochemical stains, again, next please. Our approach was to elect not to perform any further ancillary studies knowing that, okay, relative conditions such as CD4. Again, next please. These are studies has been informative in some medical public journals that these are the immunohistochemical stains are important to give your head to the the diagnosis, but sometimes you find difficulties even in Yemen to find a place to do the immunohistic chemical stains. So once I think in the like noid keratosis, we found it is a common cutaneous entity. It's also known as a lichen planus like keratosis. And of course, I, I know that all of you know the clinical picture. Next, please. So the histology, of course, as we said, we have a, a typically characterized by a dense relatively superficial lymphocytes and the epidermotropisms are there. Still 15 minutes, not finished. <laughs> okay. Next, please. These are the stains and the other histological variants. We may find them, they are positive. So finally, on this uh, patient, we found it, it goes with lichenoid keratosis. Okay, next, please. Again, next. These are the eonilational mycosis fungoides. These are rare controversial. Next, please. Again, next. There are a 65 years patient woman, and she was having, uh, through the physician clinical diagnosis, like basal cell carcinoma, and on pathology, uh, she goes with mycosis fungoides. And the diagnosis, again, goes with the benign like noid keratosis through the dermatopathologist. Okay, next, please. A 36 years old woman, she goes with the clinically with the T-cell lymphoma because the pathologist have seen a T-cells in the epidermis and she has taken a two sessions for chemotherapy. Okay, this has happened here in Sana. And again, when we re-evaluate, again the patient after she has taken the chemotherapy, she totally subsides. After some time, again the lesions come back. I mean to the patient, when we go through the slide, again we found it, next please. The patient goes, Okay, the oncologist he called me, and it goes with the diagnosis lymphomatoid papillosis, which does not require contra or conventional therapy, chemotherapy for treatment. Next, please. The summary here, the benign dermatological entity can mimic a malignant ones on histopathology, clinically benign and histologically we may found it a malignant. And again, controversial with this clinical is very important in arriving at an appropriate diagnosis, proper clinical pathological correlation can avoid an accurate diagnosis for the patient. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Zuma, for giving the time. We have two lectures more, each one 10 minutes.
after that 10 minutes for uh, discussion and lunch. Okay, the next speaker will be Dr. Muhammad Lutfi from Egypt. Is he there? Dr. Muhammad Lutfi. <coughs> 10 seconds, I will go to the next speaker. If he doesn't show up. Okay, Dr. Muhammad Lutfi is not there. Then we go to Dr. Balqis Ali Garallah. Dr. Balqis, she is working. She, she, is, she is carrying the Arabic word from Syria. She is a specialist in skin and venereal disease, working in Al-Kamori Hospital in Sana'a. She will speak about exam trauma. Dr. Balqis, please tell me that. First of all, I want to thank all of the doctors, gentlemen, and ladies for coming to this presentation, our medical presentation. Uh, our medical presentation is about IBL. Uh, that IBL, which is present, is intensive cultural time. Next. Before we starting to speak about the uh, IBL, we want to know about the photo rejuvenation. Yeah, photo rejuvenation is a skin treatment that uses intensive soft light or other thermal or chemical method to treat some skin conditions and remove wrinkles arising from the photo image. Yes. There are three types of the photorejuvenation that are There are three types of skin rejuvenation that are the thermal rejuvenation using a radio frequency device to induce a thermal effect on the skin. Chemical rejuvenation with chemical bills and the photo rejuvenation with laser intensive fast light. Second, please. Definition. First of all, intensive pulse light describes the use of intensive pulse of non coherent light distributed over a range of wavelength from 500 to 1,200 nanometers for removal of hair and other burdens. What's the indication or uses of IBL? The indication of uses or uses of IBL that one is Sun damage, sunspots, rosacea, spiders, visceral, wrinkles, reduction, scalp, stretch marks, hemangiomas, boculoderma of the vascular lesions, and hair removal. Next, please. Hair growth cycle. According to, you know, there is energy intelligence and the hair which is present. Uh, yes, IBL, they are concentrated in the skin and they are traversed the epidermis and going to the thermal debility, where there is a high concentration of melanin and that light is transferred to chemical from light to the thermal uh, uh, heat and that thermal heat will vaporize and destroy the hair. And this is the mechanism of the action of the IBM. <coughs> the advantage of that earlier IBM. Uh, we have several advantages for this. It is an non-invasive, non-ablative treatment, uses many wavelengths of color of light, and this is instead of lasers, which use only one color line. IBL zeroes the, the epidermis and go to the dermis without affecting the epidermis, and it is safe and effective. Second, please. Precautions before doing IBM. First of all, we should avoid sun exposure and sun before one week before the treatment, and Avoid any exposure to the sun. Uh, number two, uh, a topical anesthetic may be applied to the area, but this is not always for all patients. Uh, 
Pondigil is applied to the area being treated, and this is also not for all patients. We can accept or we can do it without. The smooth class service of IBL treatment state is applied to the skin, and the treatment cessation usually doesn't go more than 20 minutes. After that, it will causing heat burn or hyperpigmentation. Second, please. Treatment protocol is depends on the patient. There is no special precautions or protocols for the patient. Just only, commonly the treatment area should be cleaned, shaved freely, free of the sunburn and the treatment cessation, usually four to six weeks apart from one cessation to the next cessation. This is the first picture of the invasion. That patient is before hyperpigmentation. We will see here, there is a chloasma or melasma here, and also there is hyperpigmentation in the forehead. And this is after treatment with IBM. The second picture in the hand, there is sunspots and antigens and dermatoheliosis and the reduction here of the skin elasticity. In the second, we see here, there is a reduction of the color of the uh, skin, also reduction of the uh, elastic, uh, bitter reduction of the skin elasticity. Uh, the third, also, there is a pterygentasia here in the check near to the air. After that, there is improvement after of the pterygentasia from the check of the face. Next, please. Here also, in the ILA design of this patient, you see here, there is any atherinjectasia after two cessations of IVM, there is no. That one also, he had also acne rosacea, and after that, you see here, there is improvement after four cessation of IVM. Next, please. And that one, he had hypertrichosis in the back, and this is improvement. And after six sessions of the IVF, that one also had uh, frequency and lentigence and improvement after one cessation of IVF. About we will talk about the contraindication. Here we should concentrate on something which may be making the mistake during the application of the IVF. First of all, recent use of depleted creams or sprays. Second, waxing, plucking, or sugaring. Third, contagious skin disease. It's not a contraindicated, but needs some preparations before using the IVF. Also, herpes type 1 and herpes type 2 in the treated area. Also, not a contraindication, but need to be prepared or removed or treated before the treatment. Skin trauma, lesions, sores, or open wounds. Keloid or hypertrophic scarring, molds or skin cancer, because molds and skin cancers or melanoma can be not detected after doing IBL, and this is difficult to detect after that, and we will miss any melanoma during IBL, and later on it may be transmitted. Some birds and take epilepsy and other seizures, because that flashlight can be inducing more scissors in the next symphony plan. Continuation of contraindication, high bacteria breastfeeding and pregnancy, fat or permanent makeup in the area to be treated. Photosynthesizing topical creams or medications as doxycycline and tetracyclines and minocycline being during treatment. If pain occur during treatment, this means the application of IVL is not good or the machine is not confirming or fixing to the patient or there is some wrong with the machine to be done during the management of this operation. Side effect, pain during treatment and pain turning back. Sensation of mild sunburn, redness, peeling and swelling. Rarely blustering that can occur, and this is as I told before, if it's occur, can occur as a result of there is no good complexing of the machine or cleaning or something wrong with the machine. White patches or scars are rarely permanent. Hair loss may occur, 
losing at only 10% of the vision. Conclusion. Gorilla cream paid 10 centimeters square of skin and allowed to remain in contact with the skin for at least 30 minutes. The golden rule is about how much I will put, for how long I will leave, this for which area I'm working. All right? Uh, other usage we will not discuss. Post procedures. The post procedures, we have an, an excellent solution for this. It's about the art of skin regeneration or the physiological moist environment provided by Abomeb. Abomeb helps to induce the indigenous regeneration power of the body through providing physiological moist environment. This is a very interesting issue. We can talk, uh, inshallah, next meeting in details about what is the physiological moist environment and what is its great role in healing and excellent scar formation and uh, everything we can. It's composed of beeswax system oil as a frame structure, including 17 amino acid, 14 fatty acid, 4 polysaccharides. It has a very interesting uh, physical character. It's about low melting point, builds immediately upon exposure. Also, it's characteristic against all other local anesthetics, but it has a vasoconstrictor effect, not a vasodilatation effect, and this makes the difference. Both of them can give a great results in, uh, in local anesthesia, and you can work now without any problem. Brella provides dermal analgesia, the depths of which depends upon the application time and applied dose. Systemic absorption of lidocaine and the prelocaine from Brella is dependent upon the applied dose, application time, the thickness of the skin, which are, uh, varies between different areas of the body. I don't want to go further more in this point. I can tell you something. Just uh, build your experience with using this mixture because it has different way of application. Because we are uh, uh, talking about three parameters. Apply those, how much you are going to apply. Apply time, how duration you are going to leave the cream to do its action. The thickness of the skin, it's a skin or boost, but it has some problems. So here's a pharmaceutical solution come. A new combination for higher efficacy and longer duration of action. This new combination, Brilla cream, lidocaine 2.5% and the Brilocaine 2.5%. You take the mixture. This, yes, it's topical cream. Accumulation of lidocaine and the prelocaine in the vicinity of dermal pain receptors and nerve ending lidocaine and the prelocaine are amide type. Local anesthetic agents cause lidocaine and the prelocaine stabilize neuronal membrane by inhibiting the ionic fluxes required for the initiation and conduction of impulses, thereby affecting local anesthetic action. So it's working by this mechanism. The difference that it's a combination of two acting. Why? Because there is difference in the pharmaceutical structure of both of them. The difference in the pharmaceutical structure for prelocate give him the ability to bend more to the side of action. So giving longer duration of action. And after also you will need removal of residual heat and to promote healing in order to regenerate a new skin replacing the lost layers. So to manage these procedures for best results, pharmaceutical science presents a solution. What is the this solution? Is and now I'm going to make a solution. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the is a problem. Now for the time for the solution. Okay. Three procedures. And, and, and procedures. fast minutes for you, Mark. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, three procedures, local anesthetics is the most local anesthesia, okay? Lidocaine is the most famous local anesthetic. Sprays, creams, and uh, so on. And in the same time, it has a pharmaceutical effect. Wait, wait. <laughs> the efficacy profile of lidocaine is a local anesthetic is characteristic by a rapid onset of action and immediate duration of the effects. Also, it is the most common in, in, in souls, in face, in uh, mucous membrane. This will depend and will make difference in the efficacy of Brilla cream. Absorption safety, use Brilla safe because when 60 gram of Brilla cream was applied over uh, uh, 
400 centimeters square for 20 hour peak blood levels of needle pain are approximately 1 over 20 the systemic toxic level. Likewise, the maximum of prelocane, 1 over 36, and this why it's give longer duration of action because it's lower absorbed in blood. Okay. So you can, the dosage administration, minor derma procedure. For minor procedure, 2.5 gram, uh, grams of Brella cream, half of the 2.5 uh, gram, over 20 to 25 centimeter square. You will gain your experience using Brella with several usage, because this will make difference between case to others. Major derma procedures. For more painful dermatological procedure involving larger skin area, apply two grams of 